Hey y'all, it's Farley with the Rider's Edge podcast. And today I get to have a conversation with Brianna Barnes. Brianna, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to our conversation today. What we're going to talk about today is three key points that every rider, every horse owner should know about their horse's health. Uh, so I'm super excited to dive into this. But first, before we dive into our full conversation, we always start with a warm up. So our warm up is all about Brianna. So I am a full believer that you are the best teller of your own story. So tell us, tell us who Brianna is and uh, where you came from and where you're going and where you're at. I love it. Absolutely. So we are all always on this path of horsemanship. And I can tell you that my understanding of the equine anatomy actually started with humans. So my original licensing is in human chiropractic, and then I got certified in equine and canine chiropractic. And what I learned is that when I was working in the clinic, which was actually to help a bunch of people with scoliosis and actually remold human spines, the care that we were giving was a lot different than the care that, that I was giving my equine patients. Whereas with people, we would go in, we would adjust, they would get their home care and their rehab. And then with horses, we tended to more adjust and leave. And so we were able to help a lot of animals, but then there were those few that just couldn't, couldn't quite get to their potential. And so really started diving down that path of hanging out with some body workers and some different styles of chiropractic and really trying to get the best for each animal and truly restructure their body in order to help them heal and, and function at a higher level. Oh, such a good opening story. And I think um, if the editor of this podcast was any better than she is, we would need to... <laughs> this one woman show, but in my background, and I didn't tell you this before we press record, but I feel like that song from Oklahoma, the musical, um, the farmers mm -hmm. and ranchers should be friends has to play in the background because <laughs> make it happen <laughs> because, <laughs> because people are going, Oh, she's talking to a chiropractor. She's a physical therapist. <laughs> It all goes together so uh, perfectly. It really does. And, uh, you know, you and I met last December at the NFR and um, really hit it off and um, are very much on the same wavelengths about most everything. And so really, it's just, it's like anything else. It's having, it's um, having a common goal. And even if you are on a slightly different pathway um, to get to that goal. Absolutely. Um, it takes a whole team and sometimes it takes, um, and that's, and that's a big component of Rider's Edge and why it's coming back so strong on the podcast is because we're probably not going to talk about anything that's like rocket science today, right? There may not be any new information, right. but it may be said in just a way that somebody that's really, um, process changing for somebody. I know I've had that, um, a lot in the last month, um, Mm -hmm. going getting to go ride with KK and Donna K and and uh KK just said she said it just right and I was like oh that's what you want me to do you want me to ride with a posterior <laughs> pelvic tilt and she said uh yes that is exactly the words that I missed saying Farley <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> shame on me that's for not using those <laughs> And I was like, oh, I got it. Let's go do, let's go do this. And so, yes, you know, it was just a little bit of, of a change that I was missing. And so that's, I, I think, um, yeah, that's, that was a point I wanted to bring up and that, that's the song I hear in my head right now. So everybody, sure. you're welcome. You'll have to pull it up on YouTube to get it out of your brain <laughs> after listening to this podcast. <laughs> it is my favorite musical though. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. So we want to talk about three, three key points that every rider should know about their horse's health. Um, and I know this is a very passionate subject for you because um, you're very similar right. in, in <laughs> treating the horse and rider, um, just like, mm -hmm. just like here at Rider's Edge. So um, take it away. Give me, give me point one, Brianna. 
All right, so point, point one today will be that structure determines function. And so when we look at structure, we're looking at balance, alignment, freedom, all of those words when we think about being in the saddle, all those things we're trying to do as a rider, but we also wanna make it possible for our athlete to be able to do the same. The things that we're asking, we wanna make it possible for them and just basically help them be able to make good choices that we're asking them to do. Um, so you can go on a very basic level of strictly biomechanic. So we know that things should be centered and balanced, otherwise they break down faster. So we spend a lot of time creating these athletes and helping them be their best. We want them to last, be able to perform, not be in pain, but really, really, really show their, their heart and their ability, in my opinion. So yeah. the, the bit, go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. No, the, the other caveat um, that we probably had to put in this conversation is that we're both um, on internet and rural America. So if it gets, <laughs> if yes. it gets delayed, <laughs> that's why. So bear with us. Um, this is, this is in real time um, from, from rural America. So continue, continue. Yes. So as we go through alignment and the joints needing to be free, um, that that's everything from spine and rib function to allow for proper respiration, to allow for proper bending and flexion, but even like in the stifles to be able to track properly because mild changes there and mild torsion is going to cause breakdown faster and loss of mobility over time. Yeah, it's all, you know, I, I think the key, uh, especially where, where you come from and where I come from and even um, very few modalities, but um, is just that it's, it's really trying to maintain, mm, I think in this situation, I'll say correct homeostasis right? There's, there's perceived, there's, there's kind of, it's not perceived, but there's like, um, situational homeostasis, um, that happens that the horse just gets by with the alignment they have. Right. And then it ends mm -hmm. up just like you said, becoming an issue at the joint, um, with, um, whether arthritis is setting in for that far down the degenerative path or just an mm -hmm. angry joint itself, um, so I, I think it's all about, um, and I think this is where medicine in general for both people, for both people and horses is really starting to change, um, and come forward is that we're, we're trying to help the body help itself. Yes. Uh, let's, let's get into that. Okay. Take it, take, take it. So, so the, the other component, so you have the biomechanic component, but even so I'm a chiropractor. So my jam is chiropractic and, and moving joints. Um, but it's not so much the joints themselves that matter. A lot of people, you know, they get adjusted for pain and the pain matters, but really what we're trying to do is help the body go back to homeostasis, which is balance. And so how that happens is through fancy term central nervous system. So brain and spinal cord, but then that is basically the control center for not just our bodies, but for the equine athletes bodies as well. And so for the brain to tell the body what to do, it has to travel through the spinal cord. And the reason the spine and all these joints matter is because they literally surround and protect that anatomy. And so when you get um, distorted in the, in the spinal column, you now end up with neurologic changes down the chain that affect health, mobility, and how your body, and how your, your body, but then also your horse's body is able to recover, but also perform. Yeah, no, that, that's exactly it. And the other thing that kind of comes to mind with you saying that, um, and you, you probably got to this path a similar way. I haven't asked you this question, but, um, you generally like, I went into PT to be an ortho therapist, right? Muscles, muscles and joints, you know, musculoskeletal, um, probably same thing mm -hmm. with you, chiropractic. Um, but at this point in my practice and, and where the path has led me down is I want to know more about the nervous system. Um, it's absolutely muscle, muscles and joints will only go so far. Um, but, uh, it, it's the nervous system and how it's, um, how it's being impeded, like you just said, if, 
if the body is not in alignment, it can be impeded um, and how it is um, responding, whether it is motor planning, uh, muscle firing, different things like that. Mm -hmm. The, when you, when you look at the, the segments, first of all, for a human, um, if people want to look up, there's what's called a Merrick chart, M E R I C. And it will go through the different segments of the spine. So like upper neck, for example, targets like sleep patterns and sinus issues and thyroid dysfunction. And then like lower neck goes all into the hands, arms, heart, lungs, and like upper back goes into the stomach, lower back goes into like digestive and reproductive organs and sciatic. But they also have a chart like this for horses. And it comes out of one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, it's written by an osteopath. It's called What the Horses Have Told Me. But it goes into like, um, we see a bunch of horses that they say they have ovary issues. And it looks at the spinal segments for the horse that are directly linked to if there's a dysfunction in the spine, it's going to increase the likelihood that there's an ovary dysfunction in the horse or like lower neck in a horse, for example, can cause tripping in the front legs due to the brachial plexus or the nerves that come out of the lower neck and go down the legs in the horse. Um, but then like pole dysfunction, I think this one's the most fascinating is that pole dysfunction in a horse ties into rear leg function. And so it's, you, we can't just treat one section of the horse where there's pain we have to look at the horse as a whole and really balance the neurology. So that way the horse's body can go through and heal the way that it's designed. And that is a, um, that, that bumps up against the code of Western medicine that bumps up against the code of, um, we just treat the symptoms. We just treat locally. Um, and mm -hmm. And so, so for, for some people, they may be like, um, and, and it's, it's kind of a generational thing, you know, growing up in the United States, um, where it is my, my knee hurts, <laughs> go treat the knee mm -hmm. instead of looking at the whole, the hip and the ankle and the foot and different things like that. And it's the same thing in the horse. The, the horse is telling me it's having neck problems. Why are you, why are you worried about, um, what's going on back here in the hind quarters or what's going on all the way up in the pole and the head. And so, um, and that's where I, I think uh, medicine is going and needs to go um, far as uh, treatment of athletes um, is doing whole body, whether it's horse or human. Absolutely. And, and there being, there being a time and a place for both, like if you're in acute in a short-term crisis, absolutely do we need to manage the problem but when we look at health and wellness and longevity that's a whole different that's a whole different ball game and so what we're trying to achieve being being staying well not basically just managing managing the symptoms like you're saying yeah absolutely absolutely i am um, <clears throat> i saw a short yesterday from another podcast um talking about the immune system and how in America mm -hmm. we are, um, we're getting off on our small little tangents. I knew this would happen. We have three key points to talk about today. Um, but this, I knew this would That's be right. exactly the way I do conversations. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about three things, but we're going to have eight side stories that are all adjacent the points underneath. and all the, all the, all the things. But, um, so this, um, functional medicine specialist. I haven't gone and listened to the podcast yet, but he um, was talking about uh, immune systems in America and how mm -hmm. um, we have the worst immune system um, of all the developed countries. And that was evident in the data coming out of um, the COVID crisis. Um, it was not, it was, he attributes a lot of it to um, how bad our immune system is. And, and that goes into, I think, generational of we treat a symptoms. Um, if I have an issue, I'll go get an mm -hmm. antibiotic. If I'll do whatever, I'll go do that. And, and I'm getting off on that tangent just to say um, that what we're really talking about in our three key points today is overall health and longevity and athletic performance because mm -hmm. we're wanting, um, because the cool thing about any equestrian endeavor, um, English or Western is that there is a plethora 
of places you can go. So the longevity and the different places that you can go to compete um, is not, it's not, it, it can happen anywhere, right? There's a, there's a, there's a place for a horse and a rider to go compete and enjoy mm-hmm. their time together. Um, and so longevity Absolutely. and homeostasis is where, is where we're at with um, what we're doing with what we're talking about today. Yeah. Do you, would you like to go into like, what are some indicators for the rider that the horse's body may be struggling? Absolutely. So they can, they can, they can apply to, to knowing like, Hey, I should, I should look into this. This is a new concept for me. How how do I know that this applies to my horse? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, no, let's, let's do that. Cause then, uh, and then that will probably help me from sending crazy videos. (laughs) <laughs> all, all good girl anytime send those videos. Um, uh, I still don't the, have the, I still don't have that issue resolved yet but anyway yes let's do this <laughs> we'll, we'll keep working on it uh start starting at the front of the horse and uh, some of the indicators that you have dysfunction in the joints and in the spine um, which is ultimately affecting the nervous system and how they heal um, starting right, right with the head and the face. If you have dysfunction in the pole, horses that used to do things and now they have new behaviors that pop up, a, a lot of times it's an indicator that the joint has dysfunction. So in, in the head, literally when horses go from being real soft mouth to hard mouth, you can have TMJ issues. If they start laying on the bit, you can have pole issues. Um, if they literally won't frame and collect up, that can all be pole issues. Sometimes um, when you go like, I have a lot of people that say, oh, my horse goes fine to the left, but to the right, they don't bend. It's like, well, there's got to be a reason. And so a lot of times we'll get in there and we'll look at the joints in the neck and we'll be able to see like they literally can't. And so not only does that affect the movement traveling to the right, but then it also affects the organs that are attached to those same nerves. So very important to get that freed. Um, Lower neck is a lot of control in the front end. So like if you have a horse that trips, Um, if you have a horse that kind of, when they come out of the stall, particularly if they walk on eggshells, that's what they call it. Um, that can be a lower neck problem too. And dysfunction of that neurology biting when you're looking at the scent or when you're going to cinch them up, um, can be rib pain rearing, um, is a lot of times front rib pain, but then bucking would be rear rib pain. So both of those are kind of indicators one way or the other, like my horse didn't used to buck and (coughs) now it does like. Let's look and see if it's, is it behavior or is it something that they're trying to tell us isn't working? And then like into the back end, um, I'll see a lot of, I see a lot of rope horses. And so they'll talk about them not, you know, getting down or barrel horses that won't wrap really well. They start doing the, the, um, all those are indicators of different areas that, that we're going to look at and see, are they locked up and are they breaking down? I think that's a great list. That's a, that's a great, easy way to um trigger trigger somebody that oh I may need to start down this path um yeah yeah absolutely absolutely. oh so much knowledge dropping going on all 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 the places (laughs) I I stole it from everybody else (laughs) oh no you did not steal it you learned and then moved moved it That's into right. your own speak um okay so tell That's me right. um so we've talked about we've talked about homeostasis we've talked about um we've talked about key key things to look out for um to know if your horse uh needs some assistance let's um let's talk about your next point that you brought with you today Okay. Talk, talk about the muscling and what riders can do on their own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to bring um, it. My. Go ahead. I didn't hear you in rural America. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. You got the floor. Okay. So one of the main things when I go and I look at horse and the muscling we talk about the bottom side and the top side. So the bottom side being the underside of the neck, the belly, and into the groin versus the top side being like where the mane sits, withers, top line, and then across the top of the croup. When you look at a horse in general, they their bottom side should not be bigger than their top side. 
And so when the, when the bottom side is bigger than the top side, not only are we going to have joint dysfunction, we're also going to have muscle imbalances, which tend to be the down the chain reaction to the joint dysfunction. So we always go joint dysfunction first, then rider changing, changing the exercise to make the adjustment last longer. And so my favorite go-to, always, always see your vet before starting new exercises, but some of the go-to exercises are so simple. So most of the time we tend to keep horses on flat level, perfect ground. If you change the ground, so whether you go ride in the ditch or ride in the pasture or simply setting up some ground poles is going to be huge for your horse's core and how they lift through their chest. So they're going to come up through their withers and really have to activate the underside, which in turn helps to develop the top line. Um, most of the uneven terrain stuff should be done at a walk if, if your end goal is to basically strengthen the core. Because if you get into the trot or the canter, you're targeting different sets of muscles in different areas of the body. And you have to progress from the walk to the trot to the canter. You can't just, I think I'm going to canter some ground poles because then you'll actually um, basically reiterate the bad muscle patterns that you've already created if your horse can do it. I think So uh, we, go, we go ground poles. We also do... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Ground poles. And then what's next? We do ground poles. Uh, we do pelvic tilts on a lot of horses. So if you YouTube pelvic tilt, it's funny that you mentioned that earlier <laughs> for riders. Um, if you YouTube pelvic tilt, you'll see them ask the horse's butt to tuck under. And it's a great core activation, great top line opening. Um, but you only want to do it a couple times a week because you can get the the tissue a little tender so it's not something we do every day like you can with the ground pulls but the pelvic tilt is multiple times a week more so for activation mm -hmm. yeah yeah doing there's several things you can do to just kind of promote uh muscle firing and correct motor planning that, that you would not want to overdo it's really just a wake yes. up the nervous system wake up the nervous system and then as you are going and working your horse um, particularly whether we're roping or running barrels, um, that is the huge move that we want these horses to make that we want them to tilt it, you know, in, in the mm -hmm. pit, we're talking about them tucking their rear end or getting on their rear end. And, uh, in the medical speak, that's basically doing a pelvic tilt. Um, so when they, when they make that move, um, you know, to set down, slow the steer down before they go out, um, or when you're getting ready to go into that turn, um, you're wanting them to get on their rear end. And so that's really what you're talking about. Those pelvic tilts is just activating that, um, making sure that their motor planning is working and their nervous systems all firing in there. Yep. Um, and I think, yep. uh, another point that you brought up that I want to kind of revisit and bring attention to you is doing things at the walk. I think it's very much, yeah. uh, underestimated what you can do um at the walk and with your horse if if you are at that place of feel and timing and horsemanship um because it, it like you just said it changes um how how a horse walks at a walk is um completely different than how they go at a trot to go at a canter. Um, and I know for me, I've been doing, um, I've been putting in more days of walking and doing different exercises with my horse, um, than just walk, trot, lope, go do this, walk, trot, lope, go do this. Um, and I, and I think it will start paying off soon. Um, because it, I, I think it is overestimated what we can get done at the walk. Or underestimated rather. Um, we know we know what you were going for. Blah, 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 blah. The uh, for pe <laughs> for people that want um, multiple exercises or just need new ideas for riding, there's a it's called 55 corrective exercises. There are photos, there are protocols. Um, if you need a little bit of variety for your riding, I mean, there's everything from the walk all all the way up when to use it, how to use it. Um, and it's, it, it's a great, great resource for, for riders. Yeah. I, 
for for me, I've always um I've had the challenge. I'm usually on flat level ground and don't have access to mm-hmm. heels. And so it's using the ground poles, it's um uh dragging the log, it's doing it's doing different um different things that way um versus some of my buddies who were able to go do heel work um several several right. days a week. Um so yeah, you just have to get creative and figure out um what works what works for you. You bet. So Brianna, let's talk, let's bring our final point up. Um I know you mentioned something uh, a little bit more about geared towards the rider um and kind of what they can do um uh to help their performance. So um Let's let's bring it around to there. You bet. Um, the fi- the final point is is pretty simple, and it's literally just to remember that you matter. And so I'll I'll kind of bring it up here with a story. We were working on this barrel horse. I mean, we were working on it every four weeks, over and over and over, and we were seeing progress in it, but it wasn't dramatic like we were anticipating. And then all of a sudden, we started working on the rider, and literally, she shaved a second or half a second off of her time just by correcting herself and so it's remembering that one we affect our horse and the athlete and they have to compensate for us but also the fact that you matter so we horse people are known for um my horse has an acupuncturist a chiropractor an herbalist all the speed and then horse owners are eating crap food from the gas station and it's like well wait a second here who's gonna who's gonna feed your horse if if your body quits working Who's going to take mm-hmm. care of them the way that you do if, if you don't, if you don't take care of you. So not only in athletic performance, but in longevity and homeostasis with the rider, it's literally, I mean, it's eat clean foods. It's making sure that we're in shape and just, and really helping, helping us help our horse for the long term. Yeah. That's interesting that, um, that you said it that way. Uh, I just recorded a podcast yesterday with, uh, rural health education, Bailey Cooper, she's a dietitian and her sticking point Mm -hmm. at the end, um, was your nutrition matters for your reaction time. And I think, and I don't know, I I think, yes, I mean, and I was like, like just putting it into that little phrase right there. I was like, Oh, that, I mean, if that doesn't, um, kind of hit you in the face, um, it should, um, mm-hmm. because I don't know, um, the game is changing so much with money added and events and opportunities. Um, the competition is changing as well. And so I don't know if it's just a generational thought of you are sitting on the horse and the horse is doing all the work, um, which the only place, the only place in time that you were literally only sitting on a horse is when I do hippotherapy. Um, and I am not teaching you how to ride. I am working Mm -hmm. on you from a therapy perspective. Um, so I, I don't know, um, if that is where we got off on only the horse matters, but you as a rider are an intricate part of this as well. Yes. You are part of the team. Yes. So. Brianna, let's let's bring it to the cool down. I've got a couple questions for you. Um, so in our conversation today, give me your short little spill on why what we've talked about today would give the rider an edge. Um, every everything today helps with the master computer system in the body. If it's not correct, the horse can't be correct. And the only way to know if it's correct is to get them checked. How's that for short? That's short. I love it. That That's, I love that. Um, so uh, my second question in the cool down is, um, is there anybody that um, you think we should have on the podcast that you're following in your social media circles that somebody that's uh I, whether it's whether it's on social media or just a mentor somebody that has been important um to you and your journey sure um 
a, a couple come to mind if you are looking for some Facebook people to follow. Uh, the Sport Horse Alchemist, Kelsey Griffin. Um, she has incredible exercises and has also different understanding of the essential oils and what to use and how to use them um, for different scenarios. And she also has product for that. Um, but then also for body work that owners specifically can do would be Layla Harris or Tammy Al Alkingham. I'm probably butchering that, um, but took her course and they, I mean, it is, it's very, very helpful for owners wanting to take their horse's body to another level that they personally can do. That's great. That's why I love, I love asking that question because that just opens the community uh, up because um, uh, to, to just making it more of a, a global worldwide uh, community for people to follow. And uh, because really what we're after here is, is it's, it's, it's about the horse and it's about you. Um, That's right. You know, and so um, just trying to build that community of people. Um, okay. So open mic time. Um, I'm going to give you the mic. Talk about anything that we haven't talked about today that you want to get out there. Super passionate. Um, and then kind of um, after that, wrap it up with where can we find you? Where do you live on the um, worldwide web. Um, and how do we get in touch with sure. you, um, to get more information from you? So the, um, best way to get in touch with me is probably through Facebook. It's equine chiropractic by Brianna Erdmeyer, um, is my maiden name. Um, and then one of the, I, I, my equine practice is in central Oklahoma. Um, I currently live in Hennessy and I travel <clears throat> about an hour and a half um, in that radius, um, scheduling for that is about 10 days out. So if you're in that area and need to, and want your horse checked, but you, you can Google, um, equine chiropractors in your area. And like, it, I mean, cause I know that you have viewers from all over the nation. Um, and, and then there's great docs. A lot of people do Google searches, you know, who do you use? Then that way you can get the best in your area. But if you want a analysis, if you're not in my area and you want analysis done by me, we also do uh, photo and video consults. Um, so that's a, it's a three-step consult where you can send me photos and videos and we'll create a stretching and exercise program specifically for you. Those range anywhere from 80 to $130 for 30 days, but it's specific to you and your horse and your goals. Um, but I think most things, one of my mentors said, um, their favorite quote was keep it simple, stupid. And so if you can, if you can help people just do very, very basic things that have a huge impact, health, health isn't supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be easy. And that's what, that's why I think it's achievable for, for most. Oh, that is a great place. That is a great place to end this conversation today. Oh, Brianna, thank you so much for taking your time out this morning thanks for, thanks to have a conversation. Me. Yay. All right, guys, if you want to, um, if you want to reach out to Brianna, she is very active on Facebook. Um, and you can reach out to her at her page. Um, thank you guys for taking the time to listen to our conversation today. And as always, I will see you down the road.